Oh, you repeated to catch your Oslo was at the summit. Let's turn to the BBC's Moscow correspondent, Steve Rosenberg. live from Bujumbura. Online, on mobile and on air. This is the BBC World Service, the world's radio station. Hello, I'm Peter Day. Coming up in Global Business, some thoughts on the gender gap in the working world. It's clear that in most countries, far fewer women than men manage to get to senior positions in companies and organisations. There's a massive gap there for employers and an inefficiency for them. And then for individual women and their families, clearly they're missing out too because they're not using their skills to full potential and they're not maximising their earning power. So the spotlight turns to home life. To change this state of affairs, maybe husbands and partners have to step in to take over looking after the family. Marrying well is marrying somebody who thinks your job is cool <laughs> and is supportive and may not be the long-term huge earner, but really will be a fantastic partner, um, be a fantastic father, and essentially wants to see you be successful. The strains of balancing home life and a career coming up in global business after the news. At least 35 civilians have been killed in a wave of Turkish airstrikes in northern Syria. The Turkish military, however, says its airstrikes in Syria killed 25 people that it categorized as Kurdish terrorists. Here's Sebastian Asha. The clashes are going on in the villages and countryside around the border town of Jirabalus, from which IS militants were dislodged earlier this week. The Turkish Kurdish militia that's been playing a key role in battling IS. On Saturday, Turkey reported its first fatality in the operation. Now, reports are coming in of dozens of civilian deaths from Turkish fire in two villages targeted as bases of the Kurdish fighters. The German economy minister, Siegmar Gabriel, says talks on a planned free trade agreement between the European Union and the United States have de facto failed. Marcus Erber has the details. Things aren't moving at all, Mr. Gabriel said in a television interview. Negotiations between the EU and the US have essentially failed, the German Vice Chancellor said, because Europe would not simply submit to American demands. Both sides had sought to conclude talks on a free trade deal this year after three years of negotiations. But so far, there has been no agreement on any of the 27 chapters of the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership. Mr. Gabriel said talks on a trade deal between the EU and Canada have been more successful, and he believed the pact would be approved by the German parliament. A bishop in the central Italian region hit by Wednesday's earthquake has celebrated mass in two of the worst affected towns. Giovanni Dercole urged Italians to unite in their response to the disaster. Pope Francis also spoke of the quake at Sunday prayers in Rome. Cari fratelli e sorelle, appena possibile. Dear brothers and sisters, I hope to come to see you as soon as possible, to bring you in person the comfort of the faith, the embrace of a father and a brother, and the support of Christian hope. Public museums across Italy are to donate today's takings to help rebuild towns destroyed in the quake. An investigation has meanwhile been launched into why during the quake a recently restored bell tower collapsed on an adjacent home, killing a family of four. Counter-terrorism police in Pakistan say they've killed four militants during an operation in the city of Lahore. Police have named the four as members of the hardline Sunni group Lashkar-e-Jangvi. The Iraqi foreign ministry has asked Saudi Arabia to withdraw its ambassador to Baghdad. Shia politicians have repeatedly called for Tamar al-Saddam to be withdrawn after comments about Iran's involvement in Iraq, claiming that Iranian-backed Shia militia were aggravating tensions with Sunni Muslims. Mr. Saddam says that whether he leaves Iraq is up to the Saudi foreign ministry. World News from the BBC. State media in Iran say a member of the country's nuclear negotiating team has been arrested. A spokesman for the judiciary did not name the suspect, but said he was, he was free on, not free on bail. Last week, an Iranian news site identified Abdul Rasul Duri Esfahani as having been arrested on suspicion of selling economic information to foreign institutions. A priest has been wounded in a failed suicide attack on a church in Indonesia. The bomber charged at the cleric as he was delivering his sermon, but the explosives in his backpack failed to detonate. 
Police say they're investigating the motives for the assault. A church official, Bernard Ginting, saw what happened. Pastor, la an angel. The priest was reading the Bible and giving the sermon when suddenly we heard an explosion and there was a guy with his back on fire running towards the front to attack the priest. The churchgoers tried to calm the situation down. The Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev has signed an order lifting the ban on chartered flights to and from Turkey. The move had been announced originally in June after Turkey's president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, expressed regret for the shooting down of a Russian fighter plane near the Turkish-Syrian border. That incident in November had enraged Russia, which responded with economic sanctions. The travel ban hit the Turkish tourist industry severely, with the number of Russian tourists dropping by an estimated 95%. The United Nations says sub-Saharan Africa is losing about $95 billion a year because of gender inequality. The head of the UN Development Program, Helen Clark, said women in many parts of Africa find it hard to borrow money because they're banned from owning or inheriting land. This means they can't buy good seeds and fertilizer. Ms. Clark said closing the gender gap would set Africa on a path of double-digit economic growth. That's the latest BBC News. Hello, welcome to Global Business from the BBC World Service. I'm Peter Day, the producer is Alex Lewis, and this week's programme is all about the big and persistent gender gap in the working world. I liken myself to them. His husband is a top executive working for a big international bank in London. Fifteen years ago... Yeah, a teacher really... It suits me on many levels. I had my own form, I became the cricket master. It, it was just ticking along. And so my career took priority. But we also, you know, when we talked about it, we realized that he was better suited. I mean, I think he is a much better person at home than I would be. By this time, we'd come to the conclusion that it was much better that I be with Teddy all the time than someone else did. And I was, I was happy doing that. And then, uh, you know, the second one, and, and then you get into the swing of things, really. In fact, the Flanodin story is still not a common one. And it's also still unusual to find women at the top of an organization, in Britain and in other places, too. Figures from the accountancy firm Grant Thornton show that one-third of businesses worldwide have no women at all in senior management, and overall, only a quarter of senior roles are held by women something is stopping their progress to the top of the working world. It's something the Fawcett Society based in London knows a lot about. It's been campaigning for women's rights and equality for 150 years. Sam Smithers is a Fawcett chief executive. We've got a massive productivity gap. It's a waste of women's skills and talents. In terms of individual employers, they're not getting the best people in the right places. Women are not working at the level that they could be. And so, you know, it's not about getting the right person for the job at the moment because they just aren't getting the promotional opportunity. Them. And then for individual women and their families, clearly they're missing out too because they're not using their skills to full potential and they're not maximising their earning power, which we know is significant for their families in terms of their own household income and so on. But inequality at work is a problem in many other parts of the world too. Brenda Trenodon, the working mother in London with a stay-at-home husband, is not just a busy banker. She's also global chairperson of something called the 30% Club. It's an organization dedicated to getting more women into senior positions. With the 30% Club works, there are some cultures that are not very accepting of this. I hate to draw on Germany, but I think in, in Germany there is a cultural issue there. I certainly understand that in some of the Asian countries, you know, women have to step out of work to really school their children on cramming for exams. And that's very, very well accepted, but it does mean that, that that's a break that they take. So I think it is very different in different parts of the world, but I see it becoming more prevalent that people are finding new models. In the USA, Sheryl Sandberg is a prominent American campaigner for working women and chief operating officer of Facebook. And she's got a theory about this gender imbalance. We've made much more progress in the workforce in the last 30 years than in the home. 
So if you look at what's happened in the workplace and the glass ceiling, and they're so biased, but it is so much less than it was. But in the home, if a married couple, heterosexual couple, both work full-time and have kids, the woman will do two times the amount of homework and three times the amount of child care as a man. I have an awesome husband. We are at 50-50, and I tell you, what you'll make is who your life partner is. It is more important than anything else because everything else is...